call the meeting back to order, committee back to order. Uh, we're going to begin with our, our next panel. I want to welcome uh, the next panel to the Justice Committee, uh, continuing with our study of online hate. Uh, as we traditionally do, we're going to go to uh, those who are appearing via video conference first uh, in the event that we run into technical di difficulties. So uh, we have uh, one witness uh, appearing uh, uh, via video conference, namely uh, Robert Dennis, Assistant Professor from the Department of Religious Studies at the University of Prince Edward Island. Welcome, and uh, you have eight minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, my thanks to the committee for the opportunity to appear this morning. <clears throat> Recent events in New Zealand and Sri Lanka show how hate is not confined to the electronic world, uh, but very much that online hate can and does translate into and real world consequences. And sometimes the electronic world and the virtual world are not separate. I'm a tenured member of the Religious Studies Department at Prince Edward Island, where I teach courses on the Catholic intellectual tradition, and I have specifically a special specialization in Catholic social teaching. I want to talk to you for a few moments about online hate as faced by Christians, particularly Roman Catholics, and give you some sense of the discord between Catholic social teaching and the liberal. Most research shows that the majority of Canadians who identify themselves as Catholic do so as what we would call a limited identity, meaning it is one identity of many that can other identities and the values of other identities. In short, the lion's share of Roman Catholics, of Canadian Catholics, are cultural Catholics. Otherwise, as secular as most other Canadians holding lives, as has been the Canadian tradition since the 1840s. Catholics who are most affected by online hate, I would suggest, are the much smaller segment of Canadian Roman Catholics who take their faith, and I mean here knowledge and the tenets of Catholic social teaching very seriously. These Catholic pro-life, they tend to hold traditional understandings of marriage, of the family, of gender identity, etc. There are some people who may look upon these positions as themselves being incompatible with liberal values in Canadian society. What's overlooked in moments is that the right to conscience is a foundational value of the liberal and democratic tradition. And sometimes it's these values that come into, into conflict. Let me show just for a moment how this conflict can out uh, in the online world, whether it be through traditional uh, through uh, online platforms such as Twitter, Facebook, Ultra, uh, or, or simply using electronic media. I'm going to draw an example from the U.S. context to show how this analysis relates Catholics experiencing online hate. In recent months, 
Brian Sims, a Democratic member of Pennsylvania's House of Representatives in the 182nd District, has been doxing Catholics, in many cases these temples who are elderly, who, te who, te who tend to be teenagers, who were quietly praying the rosary outside of Planned Parenthood clinics in Philadelphia. The representative offered cash in exchange for the identities and the coordinates of these individuals who, in the U.S. context, are expressing their constitutionally protected right to assembly. And moreover, the representative was filming these encounters and broadcasting them live on Twitter with being threats such as bring it Bible bullies, your bigots, your sexists, your misogynists. What we see in many cases is a conflict about what are deemed to be the essential values of uh, particular systems. The liberal tradition, as you well know, is dedicated to a form of possessive individualism that privileges one's ability to control um, their, their body, their, um, their own um, individuality in, in a conceptual sense, whereas Catholic social teaching is dedicated to the family, the family being the smallest um, unit in society. And therefore, that brings into questions, questions of life, questions of marriage, questions of of, of the family. I would like to underscore that the health of a liberal Democrat is uh, predicated upon the ability of people of goodwill to disagree about fundamental questions. And I submit here that questions of life are the most fun. People, in this case, I'm talking about um, the small segment of Catholics described in my introduction, expressing opposition to dominant value systems need protection. It's healthy for a political system to have these conversations without uh, the fear of repercussions, reprisals, uh, um, Pastor Dennis, online, uh, one more minute. Um, yeah, online, and um, and so I would underscore uh, firstly that this group needs protection, and secondly that the mere value of holding positions um, are in no way uh, uh, forms of of online hate. Thank you very much. Very much, Professor. We'll now move to. The Republican Party of Pennsylvania called for city, state, and federal prosecutors to investigate State Representative Brian Sims over his recorded confrontations outside of a Center City Planned Parenthood. Tonight, we are hearing from the mother featured in one of those videos where Sims said he paid people to identify the teenagers with her. Uh, Greg Argos is in Center City right now with that part of our story. Greg? And you can, the reaction to these videos has just grown over the past 24 hours. Tonight, the mother of two of the teenagers confronted by Representative Sins says she was concerned about her family's safety and she didn't even realize he was an elected official until this past Monday. A bunch of pseudo-Christian protesters who've been out here shaming young girls for being here. The April 18th confrontation happened in front of the Planned Parenthood Clinic on the corner of 12th and Locust. We're there primarily to pray in front of the clinic. When Ashley Garrick, her 13 and 15 year old daughters and their 15 year old friend were approached by State Representative Brian Sims. So look, a bunch of more. white people standing out in front of a Planned no, Parenthood shaming I'm people. Really There's sorry. nothing Christian about what you're doing. The video, one of two posted by Sims himself, have gone viral. It's all over the internet. What Garrett says makes her so upset though is the apparent bounty Sims put on identifying the three teens. And so here's the deal. I've got a hundred dollars to anybody who will identify any of these three. So we're I'm going to donate to Planned Parenthood. Babies. I was 
concerned to keep my girls safe. I thought it was very important that I stayed calm for their sake. Out of an abundance of caution, we did file a report with our local police um, because our children were trying to be identified on the internet. Even so, this mother of two? I don't need an apology from him. I'm an adult. Um, I've already forgiven him. Says she simply wants Sims to address his actions toward the teens and offer them a direct apology. Absent the pro-life issue, this was about an adult interacting with minors in an aggressive manner and an adult infringing on minors' speech. Now for the past two days, we've tried reaching out to Sims, but he has not returned any of our messages. Yesterday, however, he did release a public video statement where he said he acted aggressively. I'm live here in Center City, Greg Argos, CBS 3.